Welcome to Good Day AWWA. Here's your host, David LaFrance, CEO of the American Waterworks Association. Welcome to Good Day AWWA. My guest is Kim Sugar. She serves as the Executive Director of the American Membrane Technology Association, also known as AMTA. Let's have some breakfast, learn about Kim, and hear about the latest in membrane technology. Kim, thanks for joining me today. Thanks, David. I'm happy to be here. So tell me, we're having uh, some smoothies for breakfast. So tell me why you selected this as our breakfast meal. So I started drinking smoothies about 20 years ago when I was running and training for marathons and long distance triathlons. It was a great breakfast. You get home, you're tired, you're hungry, you're really hot. Um, They're easy to fix easy to customize. You can have whatever you want, your fruit, your protein, supplement. I want to be healthy, some veggies. Um, So this one is my favorite. It is strawberry, pineapple, and banana with a little protein powder. Well, I have just uh, a mango smoothie, so let's go ahead and give it a try. All right. Mm, That's good. Yeah, very refreshing. That is refreshing. I can imagine after a long training run, that would be really good. Yes, they're wonderful. So before we get into talking about membrane technology and also the membrane technology conference that our organizations put on together, thought it would be nice to make sure that our viewers know a little bit about you. And you've been in your role for about six months, but before that, you weren't in the profession of uh, working with membranes. So tell us a little bit about what you were doing before and how you came to be the executive director. Well, sure, David. Um, while I didn't directly work with membranes, I've engaged, engaged in the water field for the entirety of my career. And honestly, going back, clean water has always resonated with me. Um, growing up, Fishing with my dad, he regularly emphasized the importance of clean water. I mean, of course, to him, he wanted the big fish, but he did instill the value in our family through the clean water. And then my passion for clean water carried forward into my graduate studies, where I studied water chemistry and water resource management. Um, And then from there, I've served in a variety of leadership roles with um, state government in Florida, including the Florida legislature. a South Florida Regional Water Management District, and also a local government in Colorado. I've overseen some of the state's largest environmental restoration projects, which most of them end up being water quality related. And then I've also been able to, or I also led um, a water supply planning program in South Florida. So that was really my real introduction to membranes, Um, working with utilities. We talked about different technologies, We evaluated different technologies for water supply and water quality. So I was able to learn some about membranes, but at that point it wasn't, I guess, in the forefront. And it was more based on treating um, seawater and groundwater brackish water. Um, What led me to AMTA was a few things. Um, One, carrying forward into the water industry, plus, you know, this membrane field is this little niche and that was very fascinating and interesting when I started looking into it. So I was like, oh, this is interesting. And plus the position led it is very diverse. So it led it led for me to be able to utilize my management leadership skills along with being able to get into the technical nitty gritty. And probably one of the most important things is the people. The association is filled with individuals that are so passionate about their industry, and it's really exciting to get to work with those individuals. Yeah, you're absolutely right about their passion for this topic and how they really are just the leading experts in that. And as you and I start to get ready for the Membrane Conference coming up, uh, there's likely to be some people who are newer to the industry and who are still, you know, at that beginning stages of learning about membranes. So give us the the basics on membrane technology and uh, sort of explain it to me or explain it to our audience, like you're talking to your neighbor over the hedge about what it is that membranes do and why they're so important to the water sector. Well, thanks, David. That is a great question. I actually have been fielding a lot. 
it's just like you said, I'm new in my role, and you know, the first couple of weeks, everybody's congratulating you on your new role, and then you find you start getting these little emails from your friends and family, and they're like, "So, what is a membrane? What is what do you do?" <laughs> so, well, membranes aren't simple, but I'll put it in the simplest terms. Um, they're used to clean water, primarily for drinking water or treating wastewater to meet stringent water quality standards. Um, they work by acting as a barrier to remove particles that may be contaminating the water or actually even particles you might want to extract from the water. There are different filtration processes that use the, the different types of membranes for different uses. Um, your process and your membranes will adjust depending on what you're treating. So whether it's domestic wastewater, drinking water, industrial wastewater, agriculture, food and beverage, the pharmaceuticals, the list goes on. Um, the most Familiar application and use of membranes, which people may not even realize that they they know about it, is for the desalination of seawater and brackish groundwater for drinking water. I mean, if you look on the back of a bottle of water, it says re processed by reverse osmosis, and that's using a membrane. So reverse osmosis, as I just mentioned, is utilizing high pressure, but there are also membranes for low pressure that would treat something to remove like an algae or bacteria. And also there are membranes that function using electric potential. So if you want to think back to your high school chemistry class, you have, you know, you talk about the positive and negative electrons or ions. Well, so you can use that to either pull contaminants or repel contaminants. So membranes have a wide use, variety of use, and also there are a variety of large variety of them for whatever your intended purpose is. So, all right, I wish you'd been my high school chemistry teacher because candidly, I don't really remember anything from high school chemistry. <laughs> um, but that's good. That's a good, that's a good uh, opening for people to, who are really just trying to understand that technology. And of course, at uh, our conference, we're going to have a big exhibit floor where people can walk along it and, and learn all kinds of the basics as well as advanced things related to membrane technology. So as you're um, as you're working in this field now, you've sort of narrowed your scope and and to get really focused on membranes and the importance of those to our sector. As you're looking forward, what is it that you see or where do you see membranes going, say um, 10 years from now? What what are we going to be doing with membranes that Either we're not doing today or we're going to be doing we're doing it today, but we'll be doing it better. Yes, yeah, so membranes have really come a long way in the last 20 years. So first looking back a little bit and, and really over that time, they've expanded beyond the traditional um, domestic wastewater treatment or for water supply. So they've been utilized in some of the industrial processes that I've mentioned. So I think over time that is going to continue because they have performed efficiently and effectively. So they demonstrated they can work. So some of the things that there's a lot of research and demonstration on right now is how to make them more cost effective. And, and really where that lies is reducing energy costs and reducing costs for managing the waste stream. Because out of all these processes, there's always, like any process, a waste stream. So I think some of the exciting things that are we're going to see over the next 10 years is looking at, one, how to reduce those costs, but two, alternative uses for that waste stream. I was just reading an article the other day that there's a new research project looking at different equipment to actually convert the waste stream into energy. So I think there are a lot of options. Um, there's a lot of interest in membranes. You know, it's one of those things when you see it, then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm interested in that. And we see that with utilities. If one utility does it, someone else does it. So I think we're really going to see it evolve, especially as it's becoming more competitive with costs. Yeah, I think those are probably some keen insights and uh, would be welcome advances, uh, especially the idea of, uh, using the waste stream and uh, as part of sort of the circular economy and and making sure that really it's not waste. It's just a stream used for other purposes as well. So I've been talking a little bit about uh, the conference that AWWA and AMTA put on together. This is the 11th year 
uh, that we've been doing it collectively together. And in fact, uh, when I first started at AWWA, it was the first contract that I signed. So it holds wow. a special place uh, for me. So can you give uh, our viewers the, some insights about uh, what's going to be special this year and what they should expect to see as they come to our conference? Oh, very much so. Well, first, the conference is in person. And while, you know, normally you wouldn't say that special, but following COVID and everything that's gone on in the last year and a half, everyone that has registered so far is so excited. So the first is it's in person and it's looking like it's a success. I know some of my colleagues in other associations were like, are you guys really going to do this? And yes, we are. And We've been working diligently with our hotel and convention center partners to make this a, a safe and fun event with lots of options. Um, our attendance is strong. Every day, more and more people are registering, so that's really exciting. We have a great number of exhibitors, so yeah, especially individuals that are new to the industry, you'll have a lot of opportunities to talk to different individuals. And we have a robust technical program. Um, we have several sessions devoted to innovation and research for membrane optimization, energy optimization, and then also we have quite a few on the removal of PFAS, um, polyfluoral ethyl substances. Um, probably been seeing in the news, they're a big issue right now, and there is a lot of research going on on how to treat and remove them from water. So we have quite a few presentations. Um, there are also presentations planned for um, operations of the facilities and upgrades of facilities and you know, a few on how to upgrade ceramic membrane facilities. So there's a little bit of something for everyone. So if you haven't looked at our technical program, please do so. I think you'll find something you'll really like. So that's a that is a great overview of that technical program. Uh, we don't want to forget about the exhibit floor, which you also me uh, mentioned. And when you can get those two things together, a technical program, and then maybe go see it on the exhibit floor. It's a powerful learning experience uh, for anybody who's in attendance. So uh, sounds like the program is really good, especially the parts about the PFAS, which is so important right now. Kim, we've got time for one last question. Uh, and I'll just open this up to you. Is there anything else you want to add for our viewers? Well, first, I want to thank all of our sponsors and exhibitors and speakers. Um, without you, we wouldn't have a program. I know everyone has put a lot of time. We appreciate everybody being flexible as the event has moved from March to July. So we're looking forward to a great event, and we really thank you. Um, also, for everyone out there, I mean, while we're about to have this event in July, we're also planning our Membrane Technology Conference 2022. And Las Vegas, Nevada in February. So we do have a call for abstracts open. So if there's anything you would like to share with every with the community about membranes, uh, please submit it. We'd love to see it. Well, thank you, Kim, for spending the morning with us. And thanks for the uh, smoothie idea. That's excellent. Uh, I do want to join you in thanking all of the Membrane Technology Conference volunteers and exhibitors uh, who've worked so hard to make this event happen. It's going to be a really great show this, this year and, again, uh, early next year. And our viewers, and, and to our viewers, I'm sorry, to our viewers, Kim and I do hope to see you. It's July 19 through 22 in West Palm Beach, Florida, for the 2021 Membrane Technology Conference. And until then, have a good day, AWWA and AMTA.